Welcome to our second worksheet on reading Part B. Thanks for your ongoing support. This video contains six Part B questions and you'll have two minutes to read each one. After the two minutes, we'll go through the answers together with clear explanations. Enjoy and happy studying. The correct answer, B, use their professional judgment when implementing the strategies is based on the following part of the passage. Professional discernment is essential in determining the application of these guidelines to the situation of the individual dental practice environment. Explanation. Professional discernment refers to the ability to make informed decisions or judgments based on knowledge and experience. In this context, it means dentists must use their own judgment when deciding how to apply the guidelines in their specific practice. The phrase determining the application of these guidelines indicates that the guidelines aren't rigid but need to be adapted based on the circumstances of each dental practice. This means the dentist has some flexibility in deciding how best to follow the guidelines rather than strictly adhering to a one-size-fits-all approach. Thus, B is the correct choice because it acknowledges the need for dentists to exercise their own judgment in applying the strategies rather than just strictly following or copying others' procedures.
correct answer is A. The option of consent ultimately lies with the patient. Explanation. The email sent to physiotherapists clearly highlights that the patient's consent is a crucial part of the treatment process. Let's break down the key points from the email that lead to this conclusion. Verbal explanation of consent forms the email emphasizes that physiotherapists must verbally explain all aspects of the consent form to the patient before starting treatment. This ensures that the patient is fully aware of what they are consenting to. The purpose is to make sure the patient understands their rights in terms of the treatment options available and to foster collaborative decision-making between the patient and the physiotherapist. Verbally go through all aspects of the form with the patient prior to the commencement of treatment. The purpose of this is to inform the patient of their rights. Patient's right to consent or refuse the email directly addresses the fact that patients have the right to either consent to or refuse any treatment. This implies that the ultimate decision-making power rests with the patient. The phrase they may choose to consent or refuse any form of treatment for any reason including religious or personal grounds is a clear indication that the option of consent lies entirely with the patient. Whether a patient agrees to treatment or declines it, it is entirely their decision, right to withdraw consent. Additionally, even after giving consent, patients have the right to withdraw their consent at any time. This further supports the idea that the patient is in control of the decision-making process regarding their treatment. Once they have given consent, they may withdraw that consent at any time. answer C is correct. Answer C states the patient's request for pain relief should be balanced with clinical judgment. This directly aligns with the policy statement that nurses should value the patient's input but must ultimately decide the course of action based on their clinic clinical judgment. The policy specifies that while patients can express their preferences, it is the nurse's professional role to determine what's best for the patient's health and condition. This indicates that clinical judgment must override patient preferences when necessary. Why A and B are incorrect. A, patients should always receive the maximum dose of pain medication. This is incorrect because the policy does not suggest that patients should automatically receive the maximum dose. Instead, emphasizes the use of standardized pain scales and careful clinical judgment, which implies that the medication dose should be appropriate, not excessive. B, nurses should consider non-pharmacological methods before administering medication. Although the policy does suggest considering non-pharmacological methods, this answer is too narrow to capture the full scope of the question. The policy also discusses the importance of balancing the patient's request with the nurse's clinical judgment, which is not covered by this option. Therefore, B is a partial but not complete answer. Conclusion.
The policy underscores the importance of nurses exercising their clinical judgment when deciding how to manage pain relief for patients. Although patient input and requests are taken into account, the nurse has the responsibility to determine whether the patient's request is appropriate based on clinical guidelines and the individual situation. Thus, the answer is C. Nurses should balance the patient's request with clinical judgment. The notice primarily discusses the precautions for inserting a nasogastric tube NGT, focusing on safety measures for the operator. 1. What an NG tube does. The first part explains the functions of the NGT, such as draining gastric contents, treating bowel obstruction, preventing vomiting and aspiration. This section is an overview of its purpose without detailing risks or techniques. 2. Precautions during the procedure. The notice then shifts to safety measures for the operator, including these steps ensure protection from hazardous exposure. Why B is correct? And the answer B, the precautions to be followed during the procedure is correct because the notice focuses on safety measures for the operator, like wearing protective gear. It doesn't explain patient dangers answer A or the insertion technique answer C. Why A and C are incorrect. A mentions risks to the patient which are not discussed. C refers to the technique for inserting the NGT, which is also not covered. Conclusion. E. The notice emphasizes precautions during NGT insertion, making B the correct answer.